The time of Passover was drawing near, and Jesus and his disciples traveled toward Jerusalem with a crowd of fascinated people in tow. The people following Jesus had heard of or seen the many wonderful works he had done, and they were eager to see what he would do once he arrived in the great city of Jerusalem. On their journey, they came across two small towns near the Mount of Olives. As they approached, Jesus sent two of his disciples ahead on a special mission. Jesus told the two disciples, When you enter the next village, you will find a donkey's young colt there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone stops you and asks what you are doing, tell them, It is needed for the Lord of all. The two disciples followed Jesus' instructions and made their way to the village. As the two men walked to the village, they discussed all that Jesus had told them, and before long, they arrived at the village. Immediately after entering the village, they came across a donkey and her colt, just as Jesus said they would. Continuing to follow Jesus' instructions, they began to untie the colt so that they could bring it back to Jesus. As the disciples worked to untie the colt, the owners approached them and said, What are you doing? The disciples replied, We need this donkey for the Lord of all. The owners allowed the disciples to take the colt, and they brought it back to Jesus. After returning, the disciples put their cloaks on the donkey's back and placed Jesus onto the animal. As Jesus rode the donkey, people ran out to meet him, placing palm leaves and spreading their cloaks out in front of him on the road. Jesus continued his journey, and as the road began to go down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began to praise God joyfully, in loud voices, for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the religious leaders had come out to watch the procession, and they grew angry over the outpouring of joy and praise at Jesus' arrival. They called out to Jesus, saying, Teacher, you must order your followers at once to stop saying these things. But Jesus responded, Listen to me. If my followers were silenced, the very stones would break out and praise me. As Jesus came near to Jerusalem, he saw the great city and began to weep. Jesus said to the inhabitants, If only you had known that today was the day your Messiah had come and that he came to bring peace. But you will not understand who I am and why I have come. Because of this, your enemies will overtake you and destroy this great city. The people of Jerusalem would only understand after his death that Jesus had come to save them from their sins. It was the festival of Passover. Jesus and his twelve disciples had gathered in a room for their last supper together. Jesus knew it would be their final time to be together before he died. So he told his friends many important things. There was one very important message he had for them. One of the disciples would betray him. The one who betrays me will dip his food in the bowl at the same time I do, said Jesus. And just as he said that, Judas reached over and dipped his food in the bowl. With shock and anger, Judas looked at Jesus. The Son of God knew beforehand that Judas would betray him and deliver him over to the chief priests and religious leaders. 
Judas shoved away from the table and scrambled for the door in a rush. He didn't look back. He scurried away to do his evil deed. All the other disciples looked on in awe. They could not believe that one of their own was a traitor. Jesus understood that the hour was soon approaching that he would suffer and die for the sin of all mankind. He told the disciples to remember his death and to think of him often. He took the cup and bread, gave thanks for it, broke it, and handed it to each of them. He told them to think of the wine as his blood and the bread as his body. The disciples did not understand what Jesus was saying. Peter, one of the disciples, said that he would never leave Jesus. But Jesus quickly told Peter that before that night was over, Peter would deny that he knew him three times. Meanwhile, with the chief priests, Judas carried out his evil deed. He agreed to hand Jesus over to the cruel leaders if they would pay him a lot of money. Of course, Judas knew it was wrong, but there was no turning back now. By now it was dark outside. Jesus and his disciples went to a garden. Jesus wanted to prepare for his death, so he fell to his knees, bowed his head, and poured out his heart to his heavenly Father. Oh God, he cried, I don't want to suffer, but I will do what you want me to. His prayer went on for hours. The disciples couldn't stay awake and fell asleep nearby. Jesus, however, couldn't sleep and stayed awake in prayer. When Jesus came to his disciples, he found them asleep. Even after he woke them and encouraged them to pray, they fell asleep again. The second time, Jesus woke them and told them that the time had come for him to be arrested. The disciples were confused and did not know what to expect. A group of armed guards rushed up to Jesus and his disciples. Judas was with them. Judas walked over and kissed Jesus on the cheek, a sign to the soldiers that Jesus was the one they should arrest. Peter wasn't about to let this happen. He was going to protect Jesus. He whipped out his own sword and slashed at the guards. In doing so, he chopped off the ear of one of the servants. Jesus rebuked Peter gently. Jesus knew that Peter meant well, but this was all part of God's plan. Jesus touched the man's ear and completely healed it. The guards were amazed. Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me like a robber? Jesus asked, looking up at his attackers. The guards knew that Jesus had been preaching and teaching in public places, and no one ever tried to arrest him there. This night was different. The disciples were afraid and ran away, but Peter followed Jesus at a distance. Jesus was led all the way from the Garden of Gethsemane through the Kidron Valley to the high priest. There he was interrogated. They were trying to find a reason to kill him. Of course, Jesus was honest and true. He simply told them what he had always declared. He was the Son of God. This enraged the leaders. They led him to another court to obtain permission to put him to death. Meanwhile, Peter stood outside in the courtyard around a fire with other bystanders. He wanted to see what happened. You're his disciple, aren't you? A servant girl suddenly asked him. No, I'm not, Peter swore and became angry. I don't even know him. Three times it happened that Peter was asked if he knew Jesus, and three times he lied. Then suddenly, the third time he lied, a rooster crowed three times, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. He ran away, feeling horrible, weeping bitterly. That night, after Jesus was arrested, Judas realized what he had done. He was so overcome with guilt he didn't care about the money that he had earned. He ran to the priests and threw the coins on the floor. Then he ran out, tied a rope around his neck, and hung himself. That same night, Jesus was on trial before the Roman leader, Pilate. 
Even Pilate didn't want to kill Jesus. He hasn't done anything to deserve death, Pilate said, exasperated. The crowds, whipped into a frenzy by the leaders, just wanted to see some blood. Crucify him, they chanted with maddening anger. Pilate decided to give in. I'm going to give you what you want just to keep the peace. But I have nothing to do with this. I wash my hands of it. The cruel Roman soldiers were only too glad to oblige. Jesus was whipped mercilessly, leaving him bleeding and wounded. They mocked Jesus, hailing him as a king. Then they shoved a crown of thorns on his head. They spit at him, hit him, slapped him, and made cruel jokes. Jesus, silently suffering, did not retaliate. He was like a lamb being sacrificed. He was indeed the sacrifice, dying for the sins of the very people who tortured him. The time had come. Jesus would be nailed to a cross. He was forced to carry his own heavy cross until he fell from the pain and exhaustion. Jesus was so weak that a man named Simon of Cyrene ended up carrying his cross to the top of Golgotha. There at the hill called Golgotha, which means Hill of the Skull, Jesus was crucified like a criminal. Hanging on the cross for all to see, two thieves hung beside him. This was no place for the Son of God. Jesus' hands and feet were nailed into the cross. The soldiers hoisted the cross into the air, and Pilate hung a sign above his head that read, Here hangs Jesus, the King of the Jews. The religious leaders were furious about this, but Pilate refused to remove the sign. As Jesus hung dying on the cross, the entire land was plunged into darkness, even though it was the middle of the day. Then, before Jesus died, he cried out with his last breath, It is finished! Jesus breathed no more. A low rumbling erupted from all around. In Jerusalem's holy temple, the mighty curtain that separated the holiest of holies was torn in half. Many knew that instant that Jesus was truly the Son of God. Before evening, right before the Sabbath started, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for Jesus' body. He prepared it for burial and placed Jesus' body in his own new tomb. He then rolled a large stone in front of the entrance. Guards were stationed outside the tomb to make sure that no one came to steal Jesus' body. The religious council knew Jesus said he would rise again. They wanted to prevent that. Jesus had to die to appease God's wrath towards sin. But this was not the end. Jesus would be resurrected after three days to defeat death and sin forever. On the day of his death, soldiers surrounded Jesus and treated him terribly. Hail the King of the Jews, they snickered, as they pressed a crown of thorns onto his head and hit him over and over with a staff. But Jesus was silent. He didn't speak up as they told lies about him or laughed at his pain. This was the very reason he came into the world. Jesus would give his life to save the world from its sin. Like an innocent lamb, he was led to his death. Jesus was forced to carry his cross up a hill called Golgotha. 
which means place of the skull. It was a horrible place, and there Jesus was hung on a cross between two criminals. Those who passed by shouted insults at him. He saved others, but he can't save himself. If you are so powerful, come down off that cross. But Jesus wouldn't come down. He had chosen to die. He had chosen to love the world so deeply that he would give his life away to save it. As Jesus got closer to death, the sky became black, and from the darkness Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Shortly after, Jesus cried out again and then died. At the moment of his death, there was a violent earthquake. Inside the temple, the thick curtain that once separated a holy god from sinful man tore from top to bottom. These events terrified the soldiers who were there, and they confessed, This has to be the Son of God. Late in the afternoon, Jesus' body was wrapped with cloth and placed in a tomb. This tomb was carved from rock, and a huge stone was rolled over the entrance. Jewish leaders remembered that Jesus claimed he would rise from the dead after three days. They feared his disciples would steal his body and claim that Jesus had risen. These Jewish leaders demanded the tomb be made secure. Roman soldiers were ordered to seal the tomb and stand watch outside of it. Three days later, early in the morning, two women who had been followers of Jesus went to see the tomb. Suddenly the earth began to shake beneath their feet as an angel came down from heaven and rolled away the stone from the entrance of the tomb. The angel shone like lightning, and the Roman soldiers standing guard fell to the ground like dead men. But the angel proclaimed good news to the women. Jesus is not here. He is risen. Hurry, go and tell the disciples. The women ran from the tomb, astonished at what they had just seen. Filled with joy, they ran to tell the disciples what the angel had said. Suddenly, a man was standing in front of them. Good morning, the man said. The women realized that it was Jesus standing before them, and they fell to his feet and began to worship him. Jesus told them not to fear, and then he told the women to tell the disciples to go to Galilee and that he would see them soon. Later the disciples went to the mountain in Galilee where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw Jesus, they were amazed. The disciples, filled with joy, worshipped him. Jesus was alive. He had risen from the dead just as he had promised. Jesus then gave his disciples a very important mission. Go, tell the world the good news about me. Make disciples and teach people to obey my commands. And to this very day, the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection is being shared around the world. After hanging in agony on the cross for hours, Jesus cried out, It is finished, and he surrendered his spirit to God. Despite his sadness, Joseph of Arimathea, a man who was secretly a disciple of Jesus, knew that to ensure Jesus had a proper burial, he had to do it before the quickly approaching Sabbath. Grief-stricken, Joseph went before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, 
to ask if he could remove Jesus' body from the cross. After Pilate gave him permission, he and Nicodemus went to the cross with a large amount of myrrh and aloes to anoint Jesus' body for burial. Together, Joseph and Nicodemus carefully wrapped Jesus' body in strips of linen with burial spices in accordance with Jewish tradition. Near the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden where a tomb had been cut out of the rock, something only wealthy people could afford. This tomb belonged to Joseph, and no one had yet been laid to rest there. It was in this tomb that Joseph and Nicodemus laid the body of Jesus. Before they left, they rolled an enormous stone in front of the tomb's entrance, sealing it shut. Before the sun had risen on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene gathered the spices and perfumes she had prepared to complete the burial customs for Jesus and made her way to the tomb. When she arrived, she discovered the giant stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Deeply distressed by what she had seen, she ran as fast as she could to tell the disciples Peter and John what had happened. They've taken our Lord's body, and we don't know where, Mary exclaimed. After hearing Mary's account, Peter and John sprinted to the tomb. John arrived first, but he did not enter the tomb. Without hesitation, Peter walked into the tomb and noticed that the strips of linen that Jesus had been wrapped up in were laying empty in a pile and the burial cloth that was placed over his head and face was neatly folded next to them. As John entered the empty tomb, he didn't fully understand what had happened, but he believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. Puzzled by what they had seen, Peter and John returned to their homes. Too upset to return home with Peter and John, Mary Magdalene remained at the empty tomb. As she wept, she looked up through her tears into the tomb, and she saw two angels in dazzling white robes. They were sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. Seeing Mary's tears, the angels asked, Woman, why are you crying? Still sobbing, Mary replied, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. As Mary turned away from the angels to make her way home, she saw a man had been standing behind her. But this was no ordinary man. It was Jesus. Somehow Mary did not recognize Jesus. She thought he was the gardener. Jesus asked Mary, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary, still thinking he was the gardener, begged him, If you have taken him away, please tell me where so I can get him. Then Jesus called Mary's name, and suddenly she recognized that the man was Jesus. She exclaimed, Teacher, and fell to her knees to worship at his feet. Jesus told Mary to go tell the disciples. After hearing Mary's report of what happened at the tomb and that she had seen Jesus, the disciples gathered together behind locked doors afraid of what the Jewish leaders might do to them. Suddenly Jesus appeared among them in the locked house and said, Peace to you. The disciples were overjoyed to see Jesus with their own eyes. After Jesus had shown them the wounds in his hands and his side, he told the disciples that they would continue his mission, going throughout the world and preaching God's love. Early morning, on the third day after Jesus' death and burial, a few of the women decided to go visit the tomb. They planned to take care of the body. But when they came to the tomb, they were shocked to find that the stone was already removed from the door. Angels stood outside the tomb and told the women, Jesus isn't here anymore. He has risen. 
Mary was standing there outside the tomb, wondering what had happened. She was confused and thought that somebody had taken Jesus' body. She did not understand what the angel was saying. Then she heard a voice behind her say, Woman, why are you weeping? Mary didn't recognize the voice through her sobbing, but thought it must be the gardener who worked near the tomb. Please, sir, if you've taken his body, please tell me where you put it. Mary, the voice came again. Now Mary recognized the voice. Teacher, she said as her heart flared up with gladness. It was Jesus. He was really alive. Go and tell my brothers, Jesus said. Mary turned and ran as fast as she could. It was true. Jesus was alive. She had just seen him with her own eyes. She was so excited and could not wait to tell the disciples and all the people that Jesus was truly risen. Back at the home where the disciples were gathered, Mary rushed into the room. I've seen him! He's alive! Jesus is alive! The disciples were so surprised they could hardly speak, but they too ran to see the risen Lord. One disciple wasn't so sure. Thomas couldn't believe that such a thing could actually happen. He loved the Lord so much, but did he really rise from the dead? Surely it couldn't be. Unless I see his hands, place my finger into the mark of the nails, and put my hand on his side, I will never believe, Thomas said. One day, Jesus appeared to his disciples as they were sitting in their upper room. He didn't use the door. He simply walked through the wall. The disciples could not believe their eyes. It was really Jesus. He was alive. He was standing there in person, in their midst. Jesus even ate with them so they could truly see that he was a real person and not a ghost. Jesus was truly alive. Jesus appeared to many other people and soon word spread of his resurrection. As people retold the account, many more became believers. Everyone marveled at the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, came in human form to bring redemption and salvation to anyone who would believe. Jesus was the only sacrifice that could appease God's anger towards sin. He was the only way to enter eternity with God in heaven. To this day, we proclaim this wonderful message to all who are willing to hear.